Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, provides smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of the perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the quality and construction that he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra-premium Roberto P. Duran Signature Line, Azan, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran uses a seed dehumidor approach as all of their tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Premium Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogie Geek segment for today. We're going to talk about uh, bourbon cocktails plus one rum cocktail that you should have in your repertoire. So let's get started. So beautiful. Before we yes. get into that, yes. apparently, we're going to do... Uh, the Derby predictions. My prediction is that a horse is going to win. There you so go. That's a good prediction. That is my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably hold true. It'll probably hold true. <laughs> uh, you want mine? I'm going with uh, Irish War Cry. The internet Repick. says that Repick. I should. Irish War Cry and my uh, spoiler, I got to go with uh, Practical Joke. Good horse, one of my favorites. Practical joke? Yeah, I like yes. him. Yeah. I like him too. I'm going to use him in some exotics. He might not win, but he'll he'll come close. Your to the internet boys. skills are awesome. He's paying good. Joe Hollywood. He's paying good. That's I don't know. I might, you know. I love the name of the one after it. Uh, it's it's not favored, but it's uh, Conquest Mo Money. Yep. <laughs> who's, favor, who's favored right now? Uh, who's Classic favored? Empire. Uh, cla uh, Classic Empire. Who's trained in it? Um. Not that good at the internet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> Not that good at the it's supposed to go, according to them, uh, Classic Empire, uh, Irish w War Cry, and then McCracken. Yeah, McCracken's a good horse. I like McCracken, yeah. Yep. So is his trainer Phil McCracken? If, uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Or, or see my Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And his cousin Pat, Pat McGroin. Pat McGroin. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's, That's the right. jockey. That's the jockey. <laughs> That's the yeah. jockey. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I know Pat very well. Yeah. Yeah. Pat. The least favorite horse is Fast and Accurate. Fast and Accurate. <laughs> Which is a live long shot. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 This is first-hand information. I love it. It's, yeah, it's great. It's absolutely. It's so great. You, you, you heard it here first. I just right. war cry and uh, practical joke. I'm going to go spoiler. with hence. Wait, which practical joke? He's going to pay well. Hence. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, wait, these are horses. I thought they were cocktails. Because, like, Irish oh, Warcraft would be an uh -huh. awesome name for a cocktail. Well, maybe we should create it. We, we should create it. That's right. You should create it. Especially the way you make drinks. I'm sure you could come up with oh, something. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I just I learned Fantastic. from my friend. My friend who taught me how to make cocktails, his name is Jack Daniel. I shit no you kidding. not. His name <laughs> is Jack Daniel. No S. Jack Daniel. Tall guy. Big gray beard. Taught me how to make cocktails. Fruity drinks. Uh, as well as my friend Apollo. Um, who also taught me how to make cocktails. So nice. between those two guys. Rocky had a friend, um, Apollo. Yes, yes. Yeah. They, they taught me how to make cocktails. So I made the mint julep, which is really, if you have fresh mint, like that's one of the things that I think hold a lot of people back. You're going out to enjoy mm -hmm. a nice cigar, let's say, and you're like, I, you know, I want like a nice cocktail. Now sure. most people are going to take a brown spirit, Maybe pour it over ice, maybe not. Maybe put a dash of water in it. Maybe if you got those rocks, uh, you know, the one big ice ball thing, yeah, you're yeah. going to do that. And that's easy. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's tried and true. But if you want to be a little adventurous, you get the summer months coming up, uh, you may want to switch to a cocktail. Uh, I mean, I enjoy a big glass of bourbon on a hot summer day, whatever. Um, but a lot <laughs> of people like, have something over <laughs> ice, you know, that still has those flavor components. So cocktails are a great way to do that. And you can buy... Budget-wise, lower-end spirits with a cocktail will still produce that flavor experience, right? Like, it's not like cigars. Like, for the most part, I mean, there's, you know, we've talked about the different right. price ranges in cigars. But with the cocktail, you can make a really low, a lower-end spirit, buy a big handle of bourbon, and get a lot of mileage out of it, which is one of the reasons <laughs> why, we, in fact, we switched to making cocktails, because we drink on a lot of our shows, and we're like, well, we can't drink 18-year-old scotch, otherwise we're going to go broke. Right, right, right. <laughs> With all, so we switched to So mint julep is great. It's really easy to make. You take some fresh mint, you get a little sugar syrup, you muddle it in the bottom of the glass, 
Um, you fill it with ice, you fill it with bourbon, and you stir it up. I mean, that's as Great. simple as it is. Now, the key is to have fresh, fresh stuff, fresh mint. This came from the supermarket because this time of year, I haven't started my garden yet because we're still like threatening frost and stuff. If you live in the warmer climates, you could probably grow mint mm. all year round. Fresh mint from the garden is definitely the way to go. Yep. Um, that makes for awesome. It just has a stronger, like I even put more mint in these and I still don't taste enough no, of it. No, I don't. Uh, for my, so uh, that's just the, the mint that we have. Are we talking um, Angel's Envy? Because we're trying to get together this weekend. and uh, I had, well, I drank the bottle, not the whole bottle, but a portion of the bottle of Angel's Envy by myself because Joe was, Joe was at work because Joe doesn't live. You live kind of far to come over to my house at 10 o'clock at night and hang out and have drinks and drive home. Mm. So, But Rain Man, I'm like, dude, you live right, right down the street. I'm like, yep. my wife is working. I was enjoying some Angel's Envy in my Christmas pajamas, smoking an Opus X. <laughs> <laughs> Tough Watching life. some TV. Simple pleasures life. Yeah. I'll be on the next one. <laughs> yeah, next time. Yeah. Next time. Uh, so, the, I mean, the mint julep's really easy to make. Uh, I find even if people don't like bourbon, if I have friends or, like, my in-laws and family that are, that are over during the summer, and I've got a bunch of fresh mint, I'll make cocktails. And even people who are like, I don't know if I like bourbon, I'm like, here, try this. They're like, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so the other one, obviously, is the old fashioned. We've covered it on the show mm, oh quite yeah. a bit. Yep. Um, Delicious. Now, what I didn't tell you about the old fashioned was, you know, my recipe is pretty standard for old fashioned because I got to make them in volume usually here in the studio, <laughs> right? It's bitters, good quality Angostura, or you can go crazy with bitters. The bitters we have are homemade by my friend Larry. Makes his own bitters now wow. and brings them to the studio, which they just, it's so awesome to have uh, homemade bitters. And so it's bitters, uh, maraschino cherry, the really expensive ones that have that, what are they? Uh, Trif Middley. They're the actual maraschino mm. cherries. Uh, those are important, as well as a sugar syrup and uh, an orange. Now, blood oranges are going to start coming in. I think coming in season. I saw them at the supermarket. It doesn't mean they're in season. Blood oranges are my favorite. But really, any kind of orange is fine as long as it's fresh. If an orange gets old, what I find is it's bitter, mm -hmm. not sweet. Yeah, right. So that if, if you taste the orange before you make the cocktail, if it tastes bitter, that you just gotta, you can still use it. You just got to compensate. And a strong wrist for the uh, muddling. And yeah. you got to muddle. Gotta but the muddle. key muddle is like a gentleman. not yeah. to muddle the orange rind when you're making it an old-fashioned because that will make it bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you basically you fill the glass with ice and bourbon, right? You're noticing a trend here, right? Mm -hmm. Ice, bourbon, maybe a little soda water on top, and you have yourself an old-fashioned. Repeat the process accordingly. That's it. Now, I, uh, to kind of deviate from bourbon for a moment, I really like a mojito. We've done these on the show before. Um, now, most recipes will call for a white rum in your mojito. Throw that recipe right out the window. Come I on. like a nice dark rum. Uh, in my mojito. I think it's got more flavor. I think it's got uh, smoother. Uh, it's definitely way smoother than the white rum. Uh, and I like it. So you basically put some uh, limes, a lot of limes, a lot of mint, some sugar syrup, muddle all that up, fill the glass with ice. You can actually do it with bourbon. You can make a bourbon. Bourbon's wonderful because you can, use, you can take those other cocktail recipes, really most other cocktail recipes, and put bourbon in it. And I find that it tastes better. What kind of dark rum are we talking? What, what do you suggest? I like to use um, a Diplomatico's is a good one. It's mm. pretty cheap. Um, what's the other one that I use? Old Monk mm. is like a, it's from Panama, I think. And it's like $20 for a bottle. Wow. And it makes awesome. On the awesome shelf of Joyles? Or? On the shelf of Joyles. Oh. 20 bucks, dude. Can't go wrong. Sweet Jesus. Yeah, it's awesome. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, you top that with more mint and some more lime and some soda water. Uh, definitely use soda water in your, your mojito. Um, so that's a really good – and mojito, even though it has that really sugary component, has that sour component, the rum offsets that and just makes it very smooth. It just – all these drinks pair very well with cigars. Because you know in the summertime on my deck, I'm not making any cocktails that don't go with cigars. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so they all pair well with cigars. We'll be over Thursday night. That's right. Yeah, you guys <laughs> come over anytime. <laughs> Mix up some cocktails, have some cigars. You can watch my kids run around and break stuff. It's a great time. <laughs> and you can watch a bunch of guys over 60 <laughs> fundal over themselves and talk about all their <laughs> medical problems. <laughs> I say that every Thursday night. You know, we go out and I said, guys, 30 years ago, is all we did was talk about women. I said, now you're talking about hemorrhoids. You're talking <laughs> about <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
You know? You're like, hey, Bill, how's your prostate doing? <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, Two yeah, rings yeah. or three. We're yeah. We have a lot to look forward to. <laughs> it's a great Hello, journey. It's yeah. a, the journey. Yes. Back it's, to, it's get back to the journey. Get, get, yes. Yeah, take, take, it, take total advantage of this time because there's, uh, you'll have a lot to talk about later. You That's know? right. This you, weekend, can't do, uh, you can't do anything. You know, Stokey's you in yeah. Prostate Health Weekly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> New yeah. segment. Now, some of these, the next one I'm going to talk about is called Cesarac. It's actually... Uh, a drink that uh, originated or was kind of reborn in New Orleans. Uh, and I tell you, you haven't lived till you've been to New Orleans and had a Cesarac. They have mastered it. It's a very tr- So the ones I've mentioned so <laughs> far, you're your old-fashioned, your mojito, and your mint julep. They're pretty, like, on the, the difficulty scale of, like, 1 to 10, like, there may be, a, like, a 4 or a 5. When you start getting your Cesaracs and your Manhattans, a level of difficulty goes up quite significantly, whereas you like you really, if you're the kind of person that when you cook, you kind of like throw the recipe out the window. With these drinks, you're going to want to follow the recipe. Tighten up a little bit. If it's off, yeah. like a, a, a dirty um, Martinez, I think it is, is in that, uh, in that range as well. Not a dirty Sanchez. That's different. <laughs> I know. I almost said that. That is not a cocktail. <laughs> it is not a cocktail. Uh, it only it, happened once. <laughs> You know what I don't want to know? I don't want nah, your story on this on this well, topic. Moving on. Say, what was his name? Well, can, so this one says Cesar. Uh, two teaspoons sugar, some water, two teaspoons water, four ounces rye whiskey. This one calls for rye. You can use bourbon. A high end bourbon works as well. Use a higher end bourbon in your uh, Cesarac. Uh, eight dashes of bitters. And you want to use a specific kind of bitters in your Cesarac. It's a Peychaud's. Uh, bitter. Bless you. And <laughs> thank you. This one uh, calls for tea, two teaspoons of uh, herb saint or pernod. And you can use uh, what's the one that they used to make people crazy? Uh, Tequila? Uh, no, the, the other. Absinthe? Absinthe. Absinthe thank yes. you. Absinthe. You can use absinthe. Now, my twist on this is when I use absinthe in a cocktail, this is why it's, this is kind of like an eight or a nine on the difficulty scale. What I do is I take the absinthe, I put a little bit in the glass, I kind of move the grass, glass around and rinse it, then I throw the, um, uh, the a- anisette or whatever it is. What did I say? Absinthe. Absinthe. Away. absinthe. Yeah. Right. Then I make my cocktail in the glass, right? So you um, fill your other uh, cocktail mixer with ice. You put your rye whiskey in, you put your bitters, uh, you stir that, uh, your water and your sugar, and you put that in there, and you stir it around, and then you strain it into the glass that you rinsed. It's like this is an advanced one. Uh, experiment with it at home. You'll get it right uh, eventually, probably after like the fifth or sixth time you make them. <laughs> you'll be like, I got this. And you also want to take a, a lemon twist, garnish it with a lemon twist. Some people set the lemon twist on fire. Run it, which releases the oils from it. Like, there's a whole thing to this oh, one. Gross. So this one's a little, yeah, this one's a lot more involved. Um, but they're really good, and it goes really well uh, with cigars, I found as well. So hmm. you guys make cocktails at home. You have a favorite cocktail that you make at home. Not so I'm, much. I'm sounds usually a, a sounds pour like over a, ice kind of guy. Pour yeah. over ice, yes. yeah. <laughs> sounds like you're going to really, really like somebody to go through all that. To make <laughs> yeah, it. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Now, Me what, time is at the essence. Oops, so, you know, so. Dude, that's like the third. You missed all the time. That's like the I third did. time <laughs> I've ashed all over my, my clothing. It's gone everywhere. Um, now, my friend Dave, and he, he wouldn't tell me exactly how he does it, but I'm like... Dave's like, I make the best old-fashioned. I'm like, dude, people tell me I make the best old-fashioned. Like, we're going to have to have an old-fashioned making contest. As soon as he started describing how he makes an old-fashioned, I'm like, dude, you win. You touched yeah. on that a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Like, dude, you win. Complete game changer right there. I don't know at which stage of making the old-fashioned. He kind of hinted to, like, there's the correct stage in the cocktail making process at which time you take the drink with... Uh, the bourbon was in it. I don't know how much garnish he had in it at the time. And you put, you smoke it. So there's like a, it looks like a little gun, like a torch, right? And you put wood chips in it. There's a tube that connects to a glass bowl that sits up, you know, upside down over your cocktail. It's made for food, Mm -hmm. actually. You can smoke a piece of salmon, like after you've cooked it. But you put the bowl over the cocktail and you smoke it. Wow. And you let the smoke sit on it for like five or ten minutes. Like, dude, that never fly in the studio. Like, I, I got to make, like, six old fashions at a clip, like, right. in between seconds. You have so. firemen in the studio. You know? yeah, sorry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, but he was, like, Let's great down. resources here. <laughs> I thought I was the world's biggest snob. Dude, Dave's like, 
I'm like, Did you like the wood chips that come with it? Like, what do you use? He's like, no, there's a special wood chip oh, that I ordered from this other website. <laughs> it's got to sit for five or ten minutes. And then he does something about setting the orange on fire, like does the whole thing. And I'm like, that's that's really, I'm impressed, dude. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm totally. Be cap. Well, ever since I've been on this show, and since the beginning of the year, Old Fashioned seems to be our go-to. It's a staple. Right? Yeah. And Try and test. So everywhere I go. Right? In my travels, I'm like, I'm going to have an old-fashioned. Sure. Yeah. And I'm thinking that we need to have an old-fashioned event here Ooh. and have people come here and sample them. Because I'm not saying this because I'm co-host of the show. I have been to numerous places. And if you want me to start throwing cannons at, at the restaurant and stuff, I can do that. It's not I'll the let, same, is it? No, it's, it's not. It's, same, not right? it's like, it's like and, and you know when I know, because from watching you, like, in between segments and whatnot, they, they put it on a can and they muddle it like twice. And then I'm like, oh, no, you're doing it wrong. Like, as soon as from there. And then, and then I just taste it. And I'm just like, yeah. It's almost like, can I just get some bourbon with ice? And like, just dash tomatoes. I've had a few well, outside uh, the studio. Like, <laughs> certainly not the same. Not the same amount of TLC. But, but you know, a right lot of what restaurants do, and, and I think even, like, if you go to a nice cigar lounge, like you guys have seen you visit a lot of nice cigar lounges. Like, if they're going to have an old-fashioned on the menu, it's probably going to be really good. It's going to be If good. you're at a higher-end place you're old-fashioned you get a much better chance right That's right if you're at uh, like if it's less if it's a restaurant and it's less than 50 or 75 a person i'm not at ruby tuesdays but yeah, I've been, yeah. I've gone no to some yeah but like, there's different as, <laughs> but like i'm talking like a, like capriccio's what is capriccio's in providence a plate like mm-hmm. it's got to be 75 70 bucks, bucks a person again. right yep. they make the best cocktails mm-hmm. uh and you order an old-fashioned it's good it's good right yeah. but when you're at not Capriccio level restaurants. Right, right. It's it's a it's a shit show usually, and a lot of times what they do is they're like, oh, old fashioned. Like uh, if they're lucky, you get bitters, right? Mm-hmm. And so they put some bitters in. They throw a cherry in. They throw uh, an orange that's been sitting on the bar for like a really long time. They throw that in. They fill it with ice. They put some bourbon in. They hand it to you. And right. like, dude, that's mm-hmm. just like bourbon with an orange and some other stuff. Like right. that's not an old fashioned. So. Yeah, you definitely got to watch it. Martinis are the same way. Um, because in this recipe, what I was thinking, the Sazerac, right? They're like, get a glass in a third. So fill two rocks glasses with ice to chill. No, don't do that. Keep your glasses in the freezer. Get a good frozen glass. Right. For a good martini, the vodka's got to be frozen, mm-hmm. right? And your stuffed olives got to be, I don't know what they use at Capriccio's for their stuffed olives, but... They're like to die for. Like I, I could. That's like my appetizer. I'm like extra olives. <laughs> that's part of my appetizer. Like they're so awesome. Yeah. Because I think they're doing blue cheese and feta cheese like mixed together, so it's like not too sharp. It's just it's awesome. So it's that kind of detail those higher end places have. Um, but if you're making them at home, I you know like I said to our listeners, summertime's coming up. Nice cigar on the deck. We're gonna have a mint julep, whatever. I think it's uh, it's it's worthy enough to mention on the show to give it a shot. You know, Mike, you're like the I take ice and put some some spirits in. That's fine. Simple but man. Yeah, you want to branch out a little bit. You know, you'd be surprised. Well, when you have your good old fashioned contest there, Mike's like, yeah, I want you to come and just make <laughs> shout out. Let's right. go. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's amazing how you know like how much of you know, I've been to a good restaurant. You know, it's overlooking the water. It's great. It's it's capriccio level. And I'm like, they have old fashioned on the like on on the the, the list of six signature cocktails. And is Elevate. it good? No, it's terrible. Oh, I'm that's like, disappointing. And I'm like, you know, I'm not like, that's ah, terrible. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, you know, that's, <laughs> and and it can tell because I sat at the bar and I was like, all right, I'm gonna have an old fashioned book sure. before we sit down, and just do that and see that. And I can just tell like it was just like like it was just quick and it, yeah. it wasn't busy. And and a lot of it is a lot. I know. Um, not is she a girlfriend about, a bartender? Well, no, no, she, she was a bartender. She was a bartender yeah. over in South Florida, and and and, and she and soon as soon as they muddle it twice, she goes, "It's gonna be his like garbage." Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And, and she likes to mix stuff at home, so she would take the place of that. Me, I'm from you. Just give me, you know, Jack and Coke. I'm good. Whatever. Right. I think you know, I'm oh, ruined ruin moving uh, forward uh, after uh, having the, uh, you know, the old yeah. fashioned here. I, I've tried a few. Uh, Outside of the studio here, and it's just not the same. So you know what you do <laughs> when you go to those places that you know are not going to make you good old-fashioned, and you just don't want, if they don't have any high-end spirits a lot of times, right? Mm-hmm. Like the Paul, the Paul. best thing they have is like like maybe Wood, friend. Woodford, maybe Woodford, mm-hmm. maybe Maker's Mark's like the highest-end bourbon mm-hmm. they have to get a highball. Yeah, right. Like, I, you know, I agree with all that. it is is bourbon or whiskey with ginger ale. 
And if you're having a cigar, I tell you what, it's, a, it's an awesome right. pairing. You garnish it with a lemon, and you're done. done. Like, and, and you're going to be way happier than trying to order one of these fancy cocktails. Like, I'm not a big soda drinker, but, you know, bourbon and, and ginger ale, I, I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. How about you, Jay? Where, where are you at? I'm a scotch guy. I like scotch. And mm. uh, I certainly appreciate a good scotch. And uh, the, uh, you know, Johnny Walker Blue is a, is a very mm -hmm. good scotch. I like Johnny. Nice People poo-poo it because they're like, oh, it's a blend. And yeah, I'm like, it's but good. But, dude, all cigars are blended. That's like, right. There's something exactly. to be said for having a blend. But uh, I'll sit on the porch and I'll pour a nice Johnny Walker on the rocks and sit there and have a nice cigar and watch the Longhorns. Watch, uh, watch, watch yeah. the Longhorns. You can't beat this guy's view. Yeah, no, yeah. no, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Tell really about nice. your artwork. You have to show up on yeah, scene. Yeah, I got um, two Texas Longhorns on the farm, oh, yeah. and um, uh, people say, "What do you do with them? Are you going to put them in the freezer?" And I said, "No, they're they're my art." And they go, "What do you mean by that?" I go, "Well, people hang pictures on their wall. My, Living art. My yeah. picture moves all the time. Mm. So, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, it's, and it's relaxing. A little aggressive. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Took uh, my my daughter at the time. I think. She was about four and a half, and yeah. we're at the fence. We're admiring these uh, these beasts. Oh yeah! <laughs> and uh, one of them, sure enough, locked eyes with us. Oh and, yeah! Uh, he came in about a yeah. hundred yards, full steam. Yeah. And uh, marked I, his territory. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> That's the key. He, he let me let me know. And, and at that point in time, I, I had I the decision. Maybe maybe the the fire department thing, whole, you know, the whole thing helped. But uh, I said, this is uh, this is a legit scenario we're in right now. Right. I'm gonna have to scoop her up and dive into the fence next door, and you know the the game's afoot. But uh, sure enough, he, he pulled up uh, within five feet of the fence, put the hockey the hockey brakes on, yeah. stopped right there, and he let me know who's in charge. And at any point in time, he could take that fence out and just oh, just yeah. have at it. Yeah. This was his house. I'm a guest. Respect accordingly. And uh, what an appreciation for those animals, man. Well, one night My I came home. Then came, you changed your drawers. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Certainly. I, yep. had, I had come home from the Astros. casino. I was, <laughs> I was playing cards one night, and it was about 2.30 in the morning, and I'm driving up my driveway, and I see all these eyes, and I go, my God, look at all the deer that are out my driveway. You know, and I'm looking, and as I get closer, I realized all my longhorns were loose. Mm. So I said, oh, wait, wait, wait. you're down man. to two. Wait, well, I had, I, I had 18 because I, I, I used oh, to no, use it for, for cutting. I used to have a cutting horse, and I used to work them. And so make a long story short, I says, oh, man, how am I going to get these cows back in the That's fence? That's a full squad right there. It yeah. was. So I got my golf cart, and I filled the back of the golf cart with <laughs> these big buckets of grain. And I'm shaking the grain, and sure enough, they're all coming towards me. And uh, I, I finally get into the field, and they're all coming in. And here comes the bull. I had one bull. And this son of a gun comes running at the cart, and I'm telling you, he grabbed the corner of the cart and nearly flipped me in the cart over one of his horns. <laughs> Talk wow. about a scary moment. Oh, yeah. And there I am sitting with maybe 20, gra 20, uh, 20 quarts of grain all over me. And, and this bull. You, you know, look delicious. I look delicious, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so needless to say, we cut back on the herd after that. But Now, uh, do you remember all their names? No, no. I got two now, T-Bone and Ribeye. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, T-Bone and Ribeye. Yeah, they're great. They're great. They're very docile. They really are. I got one there now is uh, spread from his horns tip to tip of close to seven feet. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Very impressive. Very impressive. Oh, yeah. With well, that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about our stories of the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.